नमो मुक्तानंद प्रभु पदतना सेवक सदा महाशास्त्राभ्यासी विरथन गुमा वे पड़ कदा खरे वार्ता ज्यारे सुर सरित धारा समवहे कुसंगी सत्संगी सकल जन चित्ते अति चहे कुसंगी सत्संगी सकल जन चित्ते अति चहे घनश्याम महाराज निजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज निजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान निजे Our beloved and dear Ganesham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, the one who is always with us, our Pujipad Guruji, Pujya Santo, and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. After much observation, I've seen that each and every human only does every action with a certain caution it's kind of like human nature you can say or it's kind of like it's already engraved ingrained in one's dna what do i mean something that we do anything that we do it always has some kind of precaution that our self meaning our body stays protected in one way or another let me give you an example well when the weather is cold outside what do we do we don't have we we don't no one has to tell us to wear a winter jacket to wear gloves to wear a hat to wear boots when it's winter automatically our body tells us that we have to suit up or else it will become cold when it's a summer no one has to tell us to wear shorts or to wear a t-shirt or to wear some light clothing which is suitable for our body so it doesn't warm up as much meaning each and every action we take it automatically defines our body and it adjusts to our body it's just our nature as humans another example in school if you have chemistry or physics and there's experiments that need to be done in lab there's two things that are mandatory not only for your protection but obviously school policy number 1 they make you wear those goggles those clear goggles so you can see through but the chemicals that you're mixing cannot penetrate your eyes at all number 2 a lab coat you always have to wear it to protect your skin and your clothing see this is mandatory and it's obviously human nature that if any experiments that you're doing you obviously want to protect your eyes which are the most you can say capable or the most uh open area that can be hurt fast another example you're driving in a car obviously what are you going to do if you're smart not these teenagers these days but those who are responsible you protect yourself by wearing a seat belt this is human nature to us now all these things that we do we do to protect ourselves in one way or another in the same way i had a question for you is there some kind of you can say object or some kind of activity or anything religious or spiritual related that we do that can protect us from the evil of outside that's my question to you you probably can't get what i'm talking about but off the examples that i've given to you of 
wearing clothes in the winter versus wearing them in the summer or your school chemistry lab or physics lab or even a simple safety belt all these things have to do with protection in the same exact way in our religion there's one particular you can say ritual one particular you can say item that if performed if worn it can protect us from the outside evil and this is called a kanti a kanti is a simple necklace you can say kant means neck and it's a necklace made from tulsi wood and it has two strands it represents one strand represents our soul and the second strand represents god a bond or a unity with god in our soul that's the whole exact meaning of a kanti now you can say overall it's a sign of refuge if we look at world religions here all around in the world judaism they have the star of david that also rep represents their whole religion and also it's a sign of refuge that i am part of this faith if we look at those islams or the islamic faith they have the star crescent that represents their faith and it's a refuge to them meaning if you go to their country or if you go to any of those countries they have their own flag they have their own symbol representing their own religion in the same exact manner manner for us it's a tilak channel but a sign of refuge indirectly as a satsangi is wearing the kanti in india i can say especially in gujarat suppose that you're walking in the streets of india and your kanti is visible around your neck and you're walking by suppose you didn't have a tilak channel that or you forgot your tilak channel or it's not that visible due to your long hair just give you an example but if the opposite person walking by you sees that kanti he's going to say jay swami narayan to why because he knows that the devotees of bhagwan swami narayan wear such kind of kanti it doesn't even say this kanti is just wooden beads circular wooden beads with two two strands that's it it doesn't say swami narayan on it it doesn't have any kind of you know letters or any kind of design but it's just a symbol now and everyone knows it that whenever someone walks past you and they see you and they they know that you're a, you have this kanti on then they say jay swami narayan to this is just a kind of formality now nowadays in gujarat and now i can even say around the world in the united states canada united kingdom because the swaminarayan sect has spread much nowadays so i've explained to you what the kanti is but you're probably wondering where did this come about what is this from because how did how could someone come up with such a two strand necklace that can protect you and what is all this you're probably wondering well there is a story be behind it and i want to tell you about it there is this devotee by the name of kima suthar who is a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan at that time 230 years ago and kima suthar's financial situation was very poor and he didn't have enough food or clothing to even get by so at one time he decided to visit gadra to meet maharaj and he went and he visited maharaj there and he prostrated and then he folded his hands and he was just doing darshan of maharaj and shriji maharaj asked kima sutar how are you doing and kima sutar explained that maharaj obviously my financial situation is not that good i can barely get by with food and clothing maharaj said don't worry i have a solution for you kima sutar said that would be great maharaj i would love that and maharaj instructed him that all my devotees should have some kind of you can say representation of myself maharaj just gave a small hint and then he 
kind of gave this direction that he wanted to point Kima Sutra in. And he said that go to Surat. And from Surat, you, you must get this wooden beads that are made from Sukhar. Or it's a type of wood. Or Tulsi. And there, get them and bring them back. But before that, Kima Sutar had brought a necklace for Maharaj made out of coconut beads. Coconut shell. It was just shaped in such kind of manner. Maharaj liked it very much. But Maharaj had an idea to develop a new trend. You can say a new uh, kind of uh, vibe for his satsang in the fashion of this kanti. So Maharaj was just leading Kima Sutar in that direction. So after Kima Sutar offered this coconut shelled, uh, you can see necklace to Maharaj, Maharaj took it and then uh, took it to his heart and then gave it back to Kima Sutar and wore it around Kima Sutar's neck. Then Kima Sutar set off and he had to get this wood that was Sukhard and it can only be found in Surat. So Gadara to Surat was a long road and at that era obviously travel was very difficult. So the best way was by sea, the Gulf of Kambat, where uh, the nearest port was Bhavnagar. From Gadara, Kima Surtar went to Bhavnagar. And then from Bhavnagar, he took a boat to Surat. Approximately, obviously, we can say that from directly Gadara to Surat, it would take him maybe a month. But this journey probably took him half, maybe two weeks span, right? So he wanted to come back with this wood as soon as possible. So at that time, Kima Sutar had this regular uh, routine of doing Mansi Puja. And then during the nighttime, he would start his dun. And every day he would do the dun of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And he really didn't mind who was around him, but he did his dun and remembered Bhagwan. And on that ship, while doing dun, the whole ship was set sail and in the water and there was a Brahman who boarded that ship and there that Brahman said who is this person who is he singing this Swaminar and Dune about I can barely sleep and he became furious so Kima Sutar noticed this so Kima Sutar kind of whispered the Dune so he could obviously not distract or you know obviously not bother anyone else and Kima Sutar continued his dun and then he fell asleep and there that Brahman became so upset and this Brahman knew some kind of black magic so he had some grains in his pouch there and these grains he took them and said some you can say spells and threw them on Kima Sutar he probably threw about half his bag and to, to Kima Sutar with all these spells thinking that something bad would happen to Kima Sutar. But in the morning, again when Kima Sutar woke up, 4 a.m., he started his doon again. And this Brahman was shocked to see this. He could not believe his eyes. Because usually when he would shout these spells and throw it on someone, the grains, something bad would happen or that person would, you know, stop talking or whatever that Brahman wished would happen to that opposite person. But nothing happened to Kima Sutar. Yet so Kima Sutar, what he did was he saw the, all his grains around him. So what he did was he collected all these grains and tied and put it in his bag. The Brahman was shocked and could not believe it. He said, my beads are not, my spells are not affecting this person. So he must have a better, you can say, black magic power than myself but Kima Sutar had no other refuge but Shriji Maharaj he was only singing the dune of Shriji Maharaj so on and on he sang and sang but the Brahman could not take it anymore he had to find out what is this so the Brahman went up to Kima Sutar and told him where did you learn your black magic from Kima Sutar laughed and he said I have no black magic I believe in one God and he is in, he, his name is Swami Narayan and he resides in Gadara. 
as of right now. The Brahmin said, I would like to meet him as soon as possible. I would like to learn this from him. The Brahmin did not know that this was the Supreme Lord himself. And the only thing he had to learn was to change his bad habits. So, on his mission, Kima Suthar took the Brahman to Surat and got that wood of Sukhar, the type of wood, and then returned back to Gadara with the Brahman. And when Kima Suthar met Sriji Maharaj, he offered the Sukhar wood to Maharaj. And that time, Maharaj had the beads made from that wood. And then a kanti was made. And there at that point, Sriji Maharaj, the very first person that Sriji Maharaj put the kanti on was Kima Suthar. And then this Brahman also took refuge under Maharaj and then took Vratman. And from that day on, the Brahman also became a devotee of Maharaj. In saying this, this was the history of how the kanti became what it is right now. Each and every individual of the Swaminarayan Sampradaya, the Swaminarayan sect, wears this kanti. If he is a sadhu, or a female devotee, or a male devotee, or an acharya, or anyone of the Swaminarayan sect, wears a kanti to kind of, you can say, symbolize Bhagwan Swaminarayan. So that was the history of how the kanti was brought about. And nowadays, obviously, it's formulated inside the Swaminarayan Sampradaya. The purpose of this kanti, well, I can say that, number one, it's to protect us from evil forces of Maya. You can say Kima Suthar, he had no other magic but this kanti and the Swaminarayan Mantra. And the kanti meaning the coconut shelled kanti at that time when he was traveling the ship, but it was named that after Maharaj had given this to him when he had brought the wood back but Maharaj indirectly as I told you had was pointing him to that direction but had given him back his gift to Maharaj the coconut shell necklace and from that point Kima Suthar was protected and Kima Suthar in his journey in his boat ride nothing had happened to him because of Maharaj's protection via that coconut shell necklace. So, number one, it protects us from the evil forces of Maya. Obviously, we don't see them, but it's out there. There is evil forces. There is ghosts, even if one can believe or one cannot believe. But it is written in the Sastras, it is written in the scriptures, that these entities do, are still perceived and are do exist in reality. So, to protect us from these kind of forces, we wear this kanti. And whoever has worn this kanti has never been assaulted by evil forces if that person also follows in the line of dharma, or follows the code of conduct according to Maharaj. I mean, if you can say if someone just wears a kanti but does not follow the code of conduct, then obviously it has no effect. But the kanti itself, when one wears this kanti, and I'll explain to you further that there is a process, and when he accepts that process, and when he abides by each and every rule, commitment, then one becomes protected. One's soul, you can say, becomes protected. It protects us from paranormal entities, as I talked to you about, bad company, just like mentioned in Kima Sutra's boat ride. But I can say that it plays the kind of role like a protective invisible field. Um, you've probably learned in science, uh, probably physics I'm saying, the Earth's magnetic field. It's there right now. What purpose does it serve? Well, obviously the sun, the sun's rays are delivered from the sun to the earth. It takes seven minutes. Now these rays are not all good. The heat that the sun gives us is good, but the rays that it provides with the heat are ultraviolet and are bad for us, our skin, and you can see our body overall. But the, elect the magnetic field around the earth, it serves as a protection in the form of when these rays arrive to earth, they 
pretty much protect us from the UV and only accept the heat. So the heat stays inside of our atmosphere. That's how this whole earth is pretty much heated up and stays heated during the day. But the UV rays pretty much bounce off the shield. So it plays a kind of a shield for us in the same particular manner. Using this example, I can say that the Kunti is a kind of like a force field around our body from these paranormal entities, uh, from these, you can say, ghosts and these bad, you can say, entities that are everywhere. But we can't see them because we are the devotees of Bhagavan Swaminarayan. And any of these, dev any of these entities, they cannot even come near us. That, that's how much spiritual power one single devotee of Bhagavan Swaminarayan has. So this is a very important step to understand that this is no kind of joke, you can say, that just by wearing this kanti, I've worn two kinds of beads or two strands of uh, wooden uh, beads and that's it. It doesn't serve a purpose. It serves a huge purpose, but we can't realize it because it's unable to affect us. But you can see in the world that those who don't, do not have the refuge of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, those who do not wear a kanti, obviously they have been haunted by ghosts, Obviously, there has been bad things that have happened to them. So, regarding this point, one must understand that the Ganti is very, very important in the uh, fashion of protection for each and every devotee. Now, the process of attaining. Now, there's a certain process that a Ganti should be worn by the hands of an Ekantik Sadpurush. May it be a male or may it be a female Ekantik Sadpurush. But, it should be worn by such a holy saint who has the qualities of Bhagwan, who possesses true attributes of a saint. And one, it's called Vratman Dharavanu. And pretty much by doing this, one takes a kind of ritual, a water into their hands, and then says these mantras that the, the guru or that saint tells the person to repeat. And then after that, the water is released on the ground. And then that kanti is worn by that saint. That kanti is given by the saint. And one takes five niyams, meaning five vows, saying that not to drink wine not, or liquor or any kind of intoxicating drug, not to eat meat. Number three, not to, abst uh, to abstain from adultery. Number four, not to steal even a smallest thing. And number five, not to take food and drink drinks from improper persons or sources. So these are the five vratmans or niyams that the devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan takes after taking the kanti. And by following these niyams, that shield stays 100% protected. Meaning there's no other kind of evil entities that can come into our, bo uh, our body via our soul or take over our, bo take over our body or anything like that. But you're probably saying that, you know, I'm a high schooler or I go to school now and this looks bad for me. Meaning, I have a fashion statement. I need to wear something that's going to, you know, make me look out, that's going to make me look cool. Or I need to wear some kind of, you know, you can see necklaces or any kind of dweller that's going to make me look good. But this seems dull and boring, right? Well, there are situational circumstances. You can see in gym, you know, everyone has gym class, PE, and there we have to wear a certain uniform. We're okay with wearing the uniform, but as soon as, you know, our gym teacher spots our gunti, that necklace, he stops us and says that this is going to hurt us. And this is going to, you know, there are, it's not, this is going to hurt you. Someone's going to pull on it and it might hurt you and there's going to be a big problem so I need you to take it off that's when you stop this is where you explain to your gym teacher that this is my religion you know I respect it very much so that I've taken holy vows to wear this kanti if, if I can sit out I'd rather sit out but I cannot take off this kanti please respect my decision pretty much 90% of your gym teachers will agree and will not bother because 
because they know that any kind of religious matter is something that they cannot or they would not pursue to jeopardize their, you can say, reputation in the school. But that 10%, it's very hard. They might say, you know, well, this is going to affect your grade or, you know, you're not going to do so well because, you know, I'm going to have to give you a zero because you didn't follow my directions or they can make up a lot of things because they're in a bad mood or they don't have some kind of understanding and you can explain to them that you know this is something that's going to help me increase my spirituality you this is what you're explaining in your mind then I would rather take a grade that's low than to forsake my religion because Bhagwan Swami Narayan who knows when he will come to take us to Akshradham Suppose because of your gym teacher and pressure, you take off the kanti. And at that time, that you can say one hour period, Maharaj himself wants to take you to his Akshradam. It's your time to go to Akshradam. How could he do so? He doesn't, you don't have a kanti around yourself. How could he do so? So, Maharaj expects that each and every one of his devotees has a kanti in his hand, in his neck, at all times. Secondly, as I talked about, fashion statement. Obviously, to please the world, to please those around you, that's what everyone tries to do in each and every moment of their life. But, let me ask you something. Everyone talks or has conversations with everyone but does anyone have a conversation with the owner of this world meaning everyone has a connection with each and every person here I could say but how many of you have a connection with God to keep that connection to keep that bond to keep that unity to keep that refuge one must you can say without a doubt, without any kind of peer pressure, without any kind of sung or friendship, if one has to forsake, then do so. But to protect our religious values, to protect our ritual, one must at least follow this rule of Maharaj by keeping one's kanti no matter where you go. And there are devotees right now in the Swaminarayan sect, even here at Loyadam Mandir, New Jersey, even in their school, I can even name you that Vedant Bhagat from New Jersey here. He's a great tabla artist. He plays here and he comes every week and he's dedicated to coming. But outside in his school from Monday to Friday, he does the Tilak Chanlo. He even has a Chotli. I mean, his Chotli has gotten so long, meaning a ponytail. Because his Jyotli has gotten so long that it's longer than most of these santos here. Not only that, but he wears a kanti. All the, all the you can say, symbols of a proper satsangi. He doesn't care about public ridicule. I'm sure he doesn't tell us, but I'm sure that he does get, you know, some kind of, uh, some kind of public ridicule by people, or kids saying that, what is this you're wearing, or... What is that thing back of your head? You know, why do you have that ponytail? Or what's that thing on your forehead or that dot? Insulting him in such a way or something like in that fashion or along those lines. But he doesn't stop. He just listens it in one ear and throws it out the other. He continues this trend day in and day out. And when he comes to Monday here Saturday, same exact, obviously, dress. But imagine how much Maharaj, Guruji, Puja Santo, and all of the devotees, how much they are happy upon him that he is not really, you can, you can say, affected by worldly life or by peer pressure of his school. I mean, obviously, any, any kid would like to make new friends. Any kid would like to become accepted in society, in school, or anywhere. But... To kind of forsake that and to take the side of Maharaj and Guruji and Santo, that's a true attribute of a satsangi. So, I recommend to you, if you haven't met him, 
then maybe you should get his contact or even stay in contact with him in such a manner and see and see his thoughts about ask him that you know Bhagat, I want to keep my Tilak channel in school but you know I'm getting this kind of pressure how do you deal with it Bhagat, I want to keep it shortly but there's this kind of question of how it looks how do you deal with it Bhagat, at times you know I do Tilak channel at times I don't but you stay consistent in doing it every day how do you deal about it knowing another person's perspective can really change your own perspective if you can accept it so this is just a practical you know you can say witness in front of our eyes that we can see a person who's actually we can say that even in the time of Maharaj there was these kind of devotees in the same way Maharaj has also brought these kind of devotees in front of our presence as of right now but we just need the eyes to see and fashion statement is also something that's always going to stay in society but finally our family it's all in the family right there's some devotees there's some kids that wear gunti but their parents don't wear gunties there's others where their parents wear gunties but the kids don't wear gunties there's only very few that everyone in the family wears a gunti how do you deal with that well even if one has to forsake one's family according to loya third chapter vachanamrut that what can a person not do who has the greatness of god and his saints he can even forsake his kingdom he can forsake his family it's even written in that vachanamrut then even if one suppose one wears a kanti but one's parents do not wear a kanti they don't believe in the swaminarayan sect but they give pressure to you wearing that you know you should not wear it we're not of the swaminarayan sect you should explain to them kindly but always stay in our limits and borders but we should not change our mind of thought we should not change because we know that this in the end bhagwan swaminarayan will take us to his akshardham now with wearing you can say a kanti there's going to be rules and regulations just like how there are street laws and we have rules and regulations stop sign you have to stop if you're driving in the highway and it's a sign of 55 miles per hour that's a limit i can even say in, up in the air in airplane rides airplanes you have to wear a belt you can't smoke in the aircraft these are just some kind of small minor rules public places too do not throw here throw here please recycle all these small rules here and there there's rules everywhere in the same exact manner bhagwan has bhagwan has rules of wearing the kanti one cannot eat meat obviously one cannot eat uh onion garlic one cannot drink alcohol as i've already mentioned to you all these five vratmans these five vows if one follows these then maharaj will stay happy upon us and we will not have broken the rules of a wearing a kanti over not wearing a kanti now obviously with any good thing one has to understand that or one probably wants to know that what's the pros and what's the cons what's the positives versus the negatives well let me tell you the positives obviously number 1 it protects us from evil number 2 it's a refuge of bhagwan swami nath it's a positive because who would you have god on your side or versus the whole whole other whole world on your side god is the creator of everything then why would you not take him it's like saying that suppose on your right side you have pretty much a million dollars in notes money or on your left side you would have a printing press that makes the $1 bill which one would you have obviously a million dollars will run out when you use the million dollars but if you have a printing press you can make as much as money as you want and it will still still won't run out it's unlimited in the same way taking the side of god taking the side of the akantik satpurush like our guruji taking the side of santos and devotees it's kind of unlimited there is no there's no limit to it 
and there will never be any kind of deficiency or negativity to it. So that's why that's a positive. And you're probably ver probably thinking, what's a negative? Well, there is a negative. You're probably thinking, you've showed all these positives. What can be a negative? Well, when the kanti is newly worn around the person's neck, it tends to itch a little bit here for maybe, I can say, a week or two until the beads become smooth. That's the only negative I can think of. So, as for you devotees or non-devotees or all of you viewers, as devotees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan or as future devotees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan or non-devotees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, these are the reasons, these are the ways that a proper satsangi, a proper devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan should act and should proceed with these rituals in order for Bhagwan Swaminarayan to become pleased on him. So this whole conversation, conversation, this whole topic was on the Kanti. For those who didn't know how it came about, for those who want to know, and for those who are on the verge of wearing a Kanti, I've pretty much covered all the points of process, how to obtain a Kanti, what does a Kanti do, what are the negatives, what are the positives of Kanti, what is the process, and what are the rules and regulations. So for all of you who do not have a Kanti and want to take the refuge of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, this is your first step. You should wear the Kanti by the hands of an Ikantik Satpurush, may it be a male or may it be a female. Saying this, my humble Jay Swaminarayan. Shri Patim Shri Dharam Sarvadevishwaram Bhaktidhar Matmajam Vasudeva Mare Madhavam Kesavam Kamadam Karanam Si Swaminarayanam Nilakantham Bhaje Gansham Marajani Jai.